Welcome to today's podcast episode on busy, hard, and struggle are not badges of honor. A reminder that our podcast is not medical advice. And this podcast is being recorded actually on Labor Day. And I thought that I would share a little bit more about the history of Labor Day. So taken straight from the Department of Labor, this day is observed classically on the first Monday in September as an annual celebration of the social and economic achievements of American workers. This holiday is rooted from the late 19th century where labor activists actually pushed for a federal holiday to recognize the many, many contributions workers have made to America's strength, prosperity, and well-being. And yet, I'd like to point out that physicians do not have unions and work many, many holidays, including Labor Day. Our intention of today's episode is to share that busy is not a badge of honor. Hard does not make things more valuable and struggling does not make things more worthwhile. You'll discover that busy has been normalized too much in modern day life. The takeaways are that busy and resisting does not have to be the norm. When you drop your resistance and let go of the familiarity and need to be busy, you can find flow and capacity. And in that space, amazing things can happen. So this episode was inspired by a couple of different things. One, Labor Day, but the idea that of this word labor and labor is immediately comes to mind hard and work and thinking about a laboring woman even in in labor about to give birth is a hard job and that we liken work to labor and as um, high achievers we tend to liken hard to better and so thinking about how we can approach labor and things that are hard and things that might seem like chores with a different perspective and how that can shift your experience of your life. And the last two years on Labor Day, I taught yoga classes that really explored the idea of work and hard and challenging yourself. And can that be done with love? And can that be done with ease? And knowing that for many high achievers, the idea of easy is triggering but approaching things with love may not be, or with compassion may not be. And also to notice that when we give up this idea of resisting and hard and potentially the need to fight the world and change the world, we gain tremendous capacity, space, and energy for the things that matter most. And I was inspired by a client who found this story, found this to be just amazingly useful. And that was what I really wanted to share is this idea that we can stop thinking it's our job to fight the world and change the world. We can understand that that a lot of that came from our medical training. And for many of us, it many of us, it also comes from cultural backgrounds. It comes from our family background and that we don't necessarily have to be clawing and fighting all day, every day. And that the Mark Nepo quote, when you stop struggling, you float, is incredibly powerful. And so when we stop resisting and fighting and needing to stay afloat um, and working so hard to tread water, and instead you can flip over on your back and the view is beautiful and you may actually potentially travel farther faster, letting the current um, carry you. So as we reflect at the beginning of this podcast, I just wanted to bring up these common thought patterns. I like to say they're common physician thought patterns, but they're really common thought patterns of humans and particularly common thought patterns in high achieving humans that a fight is needed, that we're here to save the world and that um, martyrdom and busyness and doing more is better than less and that there is um, a strong need for us to resist, fix, and change. And then it's possible for us to actually embrace letting it be easy, knowing that that is uncomfortable, but what results is capacity, connection, fun, 
and so many things that you never even thought possible. So to offer this idea that you could change your outlook, busy doesn't have to be a badge of honor. What if relaxed and easy and not busy, freedom were a badge of honor? And I'll jump in to share the quote by Brene Brown. It takes courage to say yes, to rest and play in a culture where exhaustion is seen as a status symbol. And that exhaustion oftentimes is associated with work. And that work, which creates exhaustion, is somehow at odds with the rest of our lives. Therefore, bringing in the fact that work-life balance, to me, is a misnomer when actually it's all just part of life. I think even calling it work is something that work implies a hard and it implies that it's the opposite of fun and the opposite of connection and the opposite of family time. And yet when you think of families that have these thriving family businesses, for example, they often work together, but it's family time. And that when we do things we love, it often doesn't feel like work. But I also think that we can do things that we don't love inherently, and it doesn't have to feel like work. Even, for example, washing the dishes, you can just shift your perspective or shift your mindset of it. And when you do that, it costs you less. It feels like less labor, as we're talking about labor on Labor Day. The other thing is that exhaustion it is a status symbol, as Brene Brown mentions. In residency, it was like glorified. If you did not get sleep and you saw more patients, you were somehow a better doctor. And they used to tell us like you wouldn't learn if you were sleeping. And so I do think that, you know, we've been really trained in our culture to think that busy is so important and doing more is better. And so what if you could just consider for a moment that doing less is better and accepting and relaxing um, not even resting per se, but just allowing can really bring tremendous gifts. And that when we don't take every email and every thought of another person as something about us or a problem to be fixed, and we just say, oh, well, that's just a thing, <laughs> then all of a sudden we have energy that we can redirect to other things. And what I find with people that I work with is that when they do that, all of a sudden, amazing things start to happen. They get offered chief jobs and they get offered all this amazing stuff because they have shifted that way of showing up in the world and they've shifted their energy so as to not be resisting all the time. And instead, they have energy and capacity to create and innovate and solve problems, not from a place of things needing to be fixed and managed and controlled, but with this positive energy of what could be possible and how could we do this differently or better or enjoy it more. So what might be different for you if you let go of this habitual attachment to hard and struggle and chose to tell a different story? And what might be the cost of not resting and not allowing for some play and continually striving for hard and struggle and labor. And I think thinking about what might happen strikes me that presence happens when you stop being busy and you stop fighting and you stop being attached to fixing and controlling. Presence for your life, presence for all the magical things in the world and for the people that you love and potentially patience too, that when we're not constantly busy and fighting and resisting and we're just in the moment, we have much more patience and um, with ourselves and also with others. And likely perhaps as patience lends itself to less judgment too. We have time to appreciate those little tiny things because we're not busy. But when we're busy and doing and fixing and resisting, we often miss that magic right in front of us. We also are available. Um, and <laughs> available reminds me of capacity. And I want to give a tiny shout out for this idea of capacity came up last year at the Brave Enough Conference and this idea that you could say, I don't have capacity for that. 
And that was a way to gracefully um, not take on more than you could handle. And so what I really love is I this um, same person I work with came up with this idea that I actually have capacity now, totally unrelated to the other. And the thought is like, wow, what would it feel like to have capacity? And how could you give yourself capacity? And to me, capacity feels like I'm available. I'm available for human interaction. I'm available to enjoy. I'm available to be present. And I think when we are available and we're present and we're patient and we're appreciating, we can also just feel more generous and spacious. And one of the things we've talked about in this podcast is, is experience delight. Now, when you show up with presence and ease, um, you have the propensity to provide better medical care. You are a more effective healer when you show up that way knowing that you can choose to show up that way. You don't have to show up as a harried clinician, super worried about running X minutes behind, um, trying to get to the next patient. Um, we can give ourselves permission, even if we are running behind to show up with presence. And there are actually studies that show that mindful physicians who are more present in the moment have higher patient satisfaction scores. And we know from practicing when your patients feel like you're present, it actually takes less time. Another uh, thought that came to mind that I wanted to bring up here is again, this idea of resistance. And I will throw myself under the bus here a little bit, but I realized that I had tremendous resistance to so many things in my day when um, particularly, so I had this experience a few years ago when I was driving to work and I was listening to Headspace on the way to work. I was not meditating, but I was listening to Headspace and the, the session was on acceptance, but the first um, exercise in it was all about resistance. And they walked you through sort of what resistance felt like in your body and in a very calm, peaceful, non-judgmental way. So my parasympathetic nervous system was all in a perfect place to receive this. And I realized something, even as I was sitting in traffic that I had never noticed before, which was I myself was resisting everything in my day from the traffic on the way to work to when I got to the parking garage, just the way we had to badge in and badge out and drive up to the sixth floor and then badge in to prove we parked on the sixth floor and the elevators were so slow. So I was resisting that and the dangerous crosswalk to get across the street and the heavy fire doors to take the stairs up to my floor. And uh, we had to badge into the back because um, people would come in and steal stuff from the back of our offices. And so we always had to keep it all locked. And then all of the things in my day, the way that the schedule was, the number of school forms that we had, and the number of well checks that we had, you know, pediatrics, August is the busiest time of year, the number of messages that we had, and the things that needed to be redone. And what I realized even before I started my day was I had expended so much energy resisting things. And what I realized by the time I arrived in my office that morning was that I was going to be there all day. I was going to answer all the school forms. I was going to go in the parking lot. I was going to go down the elevator. I was going to do all of this. And I might as well do it with grace and presence and acceptance because it was costing me so much more as I sat there resisting it all with almost not intentionally resisting it because I really hadn't in that moment ever appreciated that I was resisting it. And as soon as I saw it and noticed it, which is something that we talk about, as soon as I had that spaciousness to be able to do it, I literally in that moment was able to drop resistance and I never had it again. Because I was just like, this is a waste of time. And I don't have time for this in a busy August. It may have been just the perfect set of circumstances as I think about it. You know, it was a, a mindfulness thing that I was listening to. So I was like in the moment. And then it was the absolute busiest time of year in our practice. And so it was like, I didn't have an extra ounce of energy to be resisting. And so it all just seemed like in a moment, I could change everything when I dropped that resistance. And I think that's a really powerful tool. Yeah, even just hearing about your morning, not even in clinic yet, is exhausting. <laughs> <laughs> and I was doing that to myself with my brain. And just 
goes along with the fact that when you hold on to the resistance, especially of circumstances you can't control, how exhausting that is and how you can choose to put the resistance down. It's quite liberating. And I think that's really this power of what we're talking about today, busy and hard and resisting and just wanting to change everything. We can let go of that. And when we do, it isn't that I think we that everything goes bad. And sometimes I think in our world, we get trained to say like, well, if I let go of control and I don't keep holding on to everything, that something terrible will happen. It'll just go totally out of control. But sometimes when you let go, you literally, it's like flipping over on your back and floating. And that was what I discovered that day in the moment in clinic. And it was pretty amazing. And my clinic never looked the same and I had a lot more energy. And so I encourage you to notice where are you resisting? Where are you fighting to change things that maybe that's not the best extent expenditure of your energy? So as always, we close our podcast with some reflection questions. Where might you be laboring unnecessarily? And how might life be different if you let go of your resistance and your habitual attachments to hard and struggle and chose to tell a different story? Stay on after the sound of the singing bowl for our mindful moment offering. Thanks so much for listening today. And if you enjoy our podcast, please, please, please share it with others. We would be most grateful for your reviews and stars and truly most grateful to be able to reach more humans with human brains that could benefit from listening to some of these tools. Welcome to this mindful moment offering, inviting you to close eyes if it's safe for you to do so. This will be a grounding practice for when you're noticing resistance, any old habits of tendency to overwork or to be busy. You can use those as an opportunity to simply ground back into your present moment experience by literally noticing your instruments for grounding, which in this situation will be your feet. Begin by noticing the sensations of the ground beneath your feet. Perhaps the sensations of shoes or socks or other articles of clothing that are in contact with your feet. Noticing where the mind has wandered. and choosing to gently bring your attention back to the sensations of the feet to literally ground you. These feet that hold up so much. These feet that support you just as you are in this moment. Taking a moment to notice the possibility of grounding by noticing the feet. If any thoughts, feelings, or other body sensations have captured your attention, inviting you to gently choose to come back to the sensations of the feet. Inviting you to come back to this grounding practice 
in this moment, just as you are. Knowing that simply checking in with the sensations of the feet is an opportunity to ground you in this moment, rooting you to now. And as you're ready, invite you to blink open eyes, letting the light back in, taking a moment to notice how you feel now compared to just a few minutes ago. Thank you so much for practicing with me.